was 224 through 26. So we'll finish chapter 2 today. You see that a man is justified, pronounced, pronounced righteous before God through what he does, not alone through faith, through works of obedience as well by the, what he believes. So he's given these examples. He gave the example of Abraham in the verses prior about Abraham's faith. Um, scripture often refers to Abraham as the man of faith. Uh, Israel and all the God's people descended from Abraham. Jacob and Isaac. It started with Abraham's covenant with God. And it was restored through Israel, but it started there. So, and he, Abraham walked to the land that God showed him, which took complete faith because he didn't know where he's going. He's just trusting God to lead him. Similar to the way the um, Israelites had to follow God through the wilderness. And if they had kept their faith, they would have went to the promised land, but they lost faith and then the next generation went in. Yeah. And oftentimes that's exactly what can happen to us if we don't show faith. We'll miss out on what He in stores to bless us with because of our lack of faith. We'll try to do something our own way, take some control in our own way because of a lack of faith. And then the blessing He had in store for us, we don't get now. And that's often exactly how that happens. But He's more referencing, okay, you're saying you're a Christian. What are you showing to prove that? You know, light illuminates. There's stuff that comes off of it for it to be light. If light is dark, no one calls it light. Just as... We are to shine His light. If we're not shining His light, then how are those people to know we are Christians without us having the works to show for it? Because without the works, we're not shining the light of faith and the light of Christ to the world. And that's the point he's making. So he gives another example. Verse 25, So also Rahab the harlot was not shown to be justified, pronounced righteous before God by good works, by good deeds, when she took the scouts, spies, and sent them away by a different route. This is um, Joshua 2, 1 through 21, this story. We won't be flipping there, but that's where it's at. Um, so what happened is these, uh, I believe it's 12 spies, ain't it? One from each tribe. It's either 12 or 24. I believe it's 12. They go in to scout this city. Um, the city of Jericho because they're going in to take it and they're scouting see how to get because of the wall, you know. They're, um, so they go in and she protects them from getting captured and then helps them out. And by, because of this, they save her when they destroy the city. They let her out and then they destroy the city. And well, God destroys the city, fall, causes the walls to fall on it, and then they go in and conquer. But she's saved because of this. She's actually an ancestor to Christ. So God's plan for this comes full with this. But what it's saying is, if she wouldn't have showed this faith, she would have been dead with the rest of the city. So her faith saved her. Because her faith showed works, it saved her. And this is a perfect example for what he's saying. He's saying that it ain't by the works that we're saved. It's by the faith. But saving faith results in works. And she could have had the faith all day that they were going to conquer, which she did. But if she didn't back it up by doing anything, she would have been dead with the rest of the people in the city. It wouldn't have amounted to nothing for her. And that's what it's saying. If we live a life where we have faith but don't act on it, it amounts truly to nothing. Verse 26. Faith without works is dead. Yep. He says that a couple times in the book. Faith without works is dead. Because that's the point he's trying to drive to them. They need to start living their faith instead of just talking about it. For as human part, human body apart from the spirit 
is lifeless, so faith apart from works of obedience is also dead. There it is. Faith without works is dead. So what he's, he's comparing it to a lifeless body. So if we're living for, if we have a life in Christ, but we're not living for Him, it's as if we're dead. It's as if we're lost. Still. Because uh, I mean, just as a human does stuff when he's alive, and then when they're dead, they don't do anything anymore. That's similar to our spiritual walk. We should be doing stuff while we're living for Him. And if we're not, we're pretty much dead. And, and Scripture talks about dead churches, and in reference to that is it's no longer doing its purpose for the Lord. It's when it becomes dead. As long as it's striving to do the purpose of the Lord, it's alive. And that's how we should be. Do- we should always strive to do our purpose for the Lord which results in works of faith. And that's the point he's making. 